Hello world, Clinton here. I am the concerned netizen. And I have been very, very concerned with how poorly informed all the conversations we've been having about the internet or social media platforms in the past few years has been proceeding. So here for your reality check, we are going to look at an article from NBC News. This is Larry Sanger. The headline of this article reads, Wikipedia co-founder Larry Sanger slams Facebook and Twitter. He's been... He co-founded Wikipedia in 2001, and he's not happy with how the internet has evolved in the nearly two decades since then. It's appalling, frankly. Yes, yes, it is. I'm very glad that so many of these original pioneers of uh, the well-known internet, the uh, popular internet, the um, light web, shall we call it, in contrast to the um, evil dark web of, you know, the regular internet, which has been around since, you know, the 80s and 90s, um... I'm really glad that these people are speaking out and using their voices. Social media is very young. Social media, as a term, I mean, just kind of came out of nowhere as a way to rebrand something as friendly and nice and human that uh, was uh, difficult to use, perhaps. Um, the internet, it was a nerdy thing for people who had to stay tethered to their desks inside. Once you could walk around with your smartphone, now all of a sudden you're, uh, you're part of this digital network. We needed a reboot of the internet. We needed Facebook and Twitter. Who, Sanger says, exploit users' personal data to make profits at the expense of massive violations of privacy and security. They shape your experience. They can control what you see, when you see it, and how you become essentially a cog in their machine, he says. This is because... You can use social media without understanding anything about the internet, without understanding it technically, without understanding it as part of a larger cultural heritage that we've inherited as cyberspace. I mean, there's all sorts of interesting books written in the 90s, late 80s, about how information networks mediated through computers were going to change the world. But you don't have to learn or study any of that stuff in order to go to the store, buy a phone, install a few apps, and start talking to your friends. Walk right into the middle of the trap. Um, let's see. Sanger launched a social media strike this week to draw attention to his concerns. In a declaration of digital independence, he said vast digital empires need to be replaced by decentralized networks of independent individuals. This is happening. Now, the more control you have as a user, um, the more you can cut out all of the uh, in-betweeners between you and your personal communication, if you can encrypt things back and forth, if you can connect with people, if you can make your social network again you and people and not your social network some sort of virtual or cybernetic map of who it is you know as, you know, uh, controlled and looked at and analyzed by some third-party corporation. Um, this is the way things are going, but it's going to be very rough and very bumpy. And there's going to be lots of, um, like, well, let's say Facebook and Twitter go away tomorrow. There's going to be the next popular thing, which is going to be just as compromised as the last thing is, right? So we have to keep exploring how it is that uh, consumers will take back power. Well, consumers. Humans will take back power of their personal world, um, their digital world, and their communications. The post office can't read your letters. There's no reason why corporations should be reading your emails or your instant messages. Tim Berners-Lee, co-founder of the World Wide Web, released a contract for the web, arguing companies need to take more action to protect consumers' privacy and personal data. Um, yeah, here we go on about how uh, sincere Mark Zuckerberg is. He's been promising um, things like... Uh, like... Um, where is it here? Well, encryption, that, that sort, sort of thing. Look, Facebook doesn't want to lose members. And, like, you don't want to lose contact with your friends. You don't want to lose all of your photos and all of the work you've invested in creating your online persona. But, and I'm going to get more into this later, you have to understand that when you express yourself in a medium, when you invest your identity in a publicly available image, um, brand is the rather loaded icky term that we use your personal brand right but who you are as a person as is accessible by people from throughout the world when you identify with this 
image you've created of yourself through carefully selected pictures and through carefully typed words and whatnot, uh, you are creating an emotional attachment, an attachment of identity to to something outside of you, which is, at present, if you're a social media user, like, completely under the control of and up to the continued, you know, analysis and manipulation by the corporations who you've just given it all away to. And this has very, very interesting ramifications for uh, autonomy and human agency. So, that's something that I want to tread lightly into on this program. But uh, as lots of people will continue to stay on social media and continue like to you know allow who they are to be something which is mediated through a corporation's you know nice, safe consumer friendly playpen full of advertisements and, and and subtle manipulations of your political beliefs your shopping habits your who it is you talk to whatever as people invest their identity into this high level mediated identity there's also going to be a decentralized internet a freer internet like the internet was led into being created in like the ideas that led the internet to be created in the first place um so that's going to be anarchic and it's going to be full of unsavory things, and it's going to, you're going to be constantly exposed to ideas and beliefs that you don't want to encounter, that you're going to try to... The sort of things that people are demanding social media save them from in the first place. Disinformation and fake news being, of course, the, um, the handy catch-all term for those sort, sorts of things. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're in for a strange new world. So, we're going to keep talking about that. Um, check out my last podcast with Kimberly Noble. It was absolutely fantastic. She's an... She's she's been a hard hitting investigative reporter on um, um uh for for decades and now she teaches media studies and we have lots to say about the convention that we just went to, um I've made like lots of great contacts and uh, and uh, friends who I'm gonna be hitting up to uh, participate in things on my concern medicine platform as we're all calling everything now my platform yes, um so uh, yeah stay tuned subscribe like my stuff check out my website concernnetizen.com otherwise. Uh, uh, take care, stay safe out there, talk to you later.